All right, on to part two of our geodatabases. So we have created an empty geodatabase, and inside of that, uh, we've created a featured data set with a certain coordinate system defined, and we've also created a set of domains within um, attribute domains within our geodatabase. So our next step is to create a feature class and use those attribute domains. So I'm going to do that inside the feature data set here. Uh, I can right click here and say new feature class. I can right click here and say new feature class. And I'm going to create something for trails. Obviously, I'm going to make that into a line file. We're not going to worry about M or Z values at the moment. I'm going to stick with the default keywords. And then here, I want to enter, enter all the new fields for my new feature class. So in this case, I'm going to have things like the name of the trail. Now, I notice. Um, I've chosen, or it's defaulted to a text field type, and since we have defined domain for text fields, down here I see the option to, to use a domain to limit the values that could occur in name. So I've got trail surface, so that obviously doesn't, we shouldn't be applying to that domain to this name field, so that doesn't make sense here, but notice that that option appears when the field types match. Uh, and then I have things like the trails width, and I'm going to switch that to I think a short integer, and now I see my domain, uh, my range domain for trail width that I want to use in this case. I'm also going to set a default value of two feet. I'm going to have surface type. That's going to be text, and now my coded domain makes sense. And again, I want to use a default value. Now here, I don't like how arc works. I have to type in that default value. Uh, it should be a drop down, so you only choose one of the values that's uh, one of my codes that's uh, allowed. So be careful that you enter the correct value there. All right, and I could go on and add additional fields for the trails, but for now we'll stick with this. So I'll finish that, and I now have a new feature class that's empty. I can preview that and see that there's nothing in there. Look at the table, and I just have my attributes with no features yet defined. So we're going to do one more step before we go to editing. Um, we're going to create subtypes for trails, so this is a way for us to edit uh, and use, let's say, common types of trails that we're going to find and have default values for each of those, uh, even symbology that will speed up the editing and minimize the chance that we have, an er have any errors. So I'm going to right-click on Trails and go to Properties, and here are you know, all the different things that I can set or change for this feature class, and what I'm going to be interested in is subtypes. Um, oops, in order to have a subtype, I need to have an additional field. So I need to have a subtype field, so I'm going to go over to the fields here and say trail type. In this case, it's going to be a short integer. Uh, and say apply. Go back over to subtypes. And it still doesn't need to be able to use that, so I'm going to see if I can go in here and now that I've applied that now the trail type appears so we're gonna create different types of trails kind of matching our surface type here we're gonna have a dirt trail uh, we'll make that code equal to one gravel saved and the other codes one two three and four and then um, my default type, I'm going to have gravel, so that'll be the one that uh, it chooses by default. And then down here at the bottom, I can set the default values for different subtypes. Obviously, that there might be a different width for paved versus gravel. So uh, if I switch to gravel or paved here, I'm going to switch that width to 10 feet. Uh, dirt, I'm going to have two, and gravel, I'll have four. And then for paved, obviously the service type, I'm going to have be paved. Again, I have to type that in, and I shouldn't have to. I should have a drop down. OK, so for each of our subtypes, as I click through these, for dirt, I have a default width of 2, service type of dirt. For gravel trails, default width of 4, service type, type of gravel. Paved, 10, and paved, and other. Uh, width of two, let's just make that four, and surface type of other. 
All right, so we've got these different types of trails then that we'll be able to create when we go into the edit mode. Apply, make sure I don't have any errors, and say OK. All right, we'll pause there. So now we have everything set up for this point blank feature class, and next we'll show I'll show you how to do some editing with that. Thanks.